Hello everyone, today we're going to go over how to make your own Python package. So perhaps you have a new idea for a great Python package and you don't know how to make it. Well, we're going to do that today. I'm going to show you how to do that using a template package or a template repository from my github.com slash quantum accelerators research group page. I'll put a link to this template in the description for the video. And what we see here is there's a bunch of files and this name is named template. And we're going to just click the button, use this template, click, create a new repository, give it a name for a package we want to make. I'm going to call our new package cool code because that sounds cool. This is a cool package, just a test for a YouTube video in case my friends see this and you can just click create repository. It should take just a moment. All right. Now it will basically clone this repository and you can see it has our name of our given package, cool code, generated from this template. What we're going to use is a software program to interface with GitHub and Git. I like to use Git Kraken. It's a great name, has a cute logo, but you can use the GitHub official desktop tool if you like. They're both pretty much very similar. If you go to the open or clone, rather, we're going to go to github.com and clone our repository. Of course, you have to log in first. It'll then download it to your local machine. You could see the Git history. And I'm going to open this now in my favorite text editor, VS Code. I already have it open, but I will do it again. And what we see is it contains the same structure that's on the GitHub website. The reason I wanted to do this is because, let me make this a little bigger, is we're going to replace all instances of the word template with our code name. And that's just easier to do on VS Code. So I'll do cool code and we'll click replace. And that is the most important thing. So now we see we have an updated readme that contains information about the code and you can update the description obviously since this will not be relevant to you. And what else did we do? We have a bunch of files here I'll walk through. The pyproject.toml file contains information about how to install your package, so you can do pip install. And it has a name, it has a version number, you can put in your own information. But here are the really important things. A requires Python argument that tells the user and the program you're using to install the package what versions of Python are supported. At the time of this video, I'm using 3.9 to 3.11, but you can certainly update that. A list of all of your dependencies, so you would keep listing more of them here. Like if you did this and a bunch of other names, that's what you would do. And for this package, we'll just have NumPy be the only dependency. But the purpose of having these dependencies is such that when you do pip install, it will make sure that all of the dependencies for your main package, cool code, you also have the dependencies installed too. Then there are optional dependencies that you can add. I have two here that I commonly like. One is called dev for development purposes, it contains a code formatter, a testing suite, and docs, which is for building the documentation that we have in this repository, which is based on a package called mkdocs for materials or mkdocs materials. And the rest of this is mostly boilerplate that you can either keep or delete. We'll close that. This is a documentation file. We'll come back to it later. This license, you can change it if you like. It starts with a fairly permissive BSD three clause license, a sample code of conduct, which I always like to include, a change log where you can, as you make version updates, you can say, here's my version one. And you could say added initial release. And you know, then when you do version 2 point or 0.0.2, .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 you can say fixed, I fixed my favorite function, right? You don't need to have this at the start because you're probably going to make lots of iterations, but once you start having a more streamlined and uh, ready production ready package, you might want to consider having a change log. A git ignore, it ignores all of these files, which is usually cache related things. And these are two different third party dependency uh, code configuration files you can keep or delete depending on if you use them. All of the code will live in this source directory, which is actually source and then the package name. So this didn't get renamed because it was a folder. So we'll rename that to cool code. And it contains an init. All your directories in source need an init file. And the real meat and potatoes here are all your codes 
and functions inside your source directory. So here I have two simple functions, one that just adds two numbers together. Here is a sample doc string, a numpy style doc string, and it takes in two arguments, a and b, and returns a number that's a plus b. And then I have another one called make array, where I'm going to take in an input that is a number, maybe even a length for that array and spit out a given array. Obviously these are somewhat contrived examples, but the point is that you add all your code here and then the idea is that you can import cool code and these various functions when you install the package. All right, let's actually give it a go. So I'm gonna open up my terminal, go to cool code and install it with this. So pip install, the E indicates editable mode so that you can make sure that any changes you make are also reflected in your code without having to re install the package. Dot means install it here, and then any optional dependencies, the development dependencies in this case, will be installed in the brackets. And so we'll do this, and we will wait just a moment, and it'll recompile and reinstall everything, and we are done. Now, what we can do is we can open up Python and say from cool code import, and then this is actually in sample. So we'll do from, well, first we'll try just import cool code, cool code to make sure it works and it does. We'll do from cool code dot sample. Obviously you want to change this to your own given Python file name, import add make array. Great. And if I do add one, two, it returns three. If I do make array four and then the length, length equals 10 or 10, you see that worked as well. And so you automatically will have all of your functions importable when you use this template and you install the package. So we'll exit that. Great, you can use this, it's great. You can use it as is, but if you wanna have it be a robust package, it's useful to have unit tests. And so that's what this test folder contains. It contains a requirements file where it has all the dependencies, but with a specific version number so that all of your tests are running on a specific version. This is important for both reproducibility purposes and because when, let's say, NumPy comes out with a new version, you want GitHub to automatically update this so that you know if the new update of your dependencies will break your code. So this is effectively a mimic of what's in PyProject, but with specific pinned versions. We don't include the pinned versions in PyProject because then the user is forced to use a specific version, which is somewhat restrictive. The Folder will contain all our different tests. And here I have a sample folder for corresponding to our cool code sample.py. And here are all our tests that are gonna test our sample functions. We have a test add that tests the add function and use a cert to say, hey, I wanna make sure that add one, two equals three. And if it doesn't, raise an error. And then we're gonna make sure that we make our arrays appropriately. And NumPy has its own various testing utilities as well. In this case, an assert all close command, which is very useful for making sure that 3.0000001 ends up being the same as three, you know? So these are the tests. You'll add your own tests corresponding to your own source code as well. You can run these tests uh, locally. So if I go into tests and I go into the main director here and I do pytest dot means like run pytest, you see that they all passed green circles. If I actually made this a four, which will obviously not pass, and I reran our test suite, it says, hey, three does not equal four, something's wrong. So this is useful to make sure you don't break your code. And so that is useful, but it's not enough to just run locally. You also want GitHub to do it every time you make a commit. So we have a doc GitHub folder. This depend about file can be configured in such a way so as to update your requirements file, the different versions when new versions come out. I have it set up to update weekly. The workflows contains the various GitHub workflows. So tests runs all the unit tests that are in tests that you can go through this yourself. It contains two different Python versions. It'll test 3.9, 3.11 at the time of this discussion. Um, there's various steps. It checks out the repo. It sets up Python. It installs the Python packages with the various dependencies. It runs PyTest. And if you have a CodeCov account, it will upload to CodeCov. If you don't want that, just comment it out. CodeConf tells you what fraction of lines in your source code have been covered by tests. So as your package grows, you know which lines might be vulnerable to changes without having proper tests associated with it. We have a release suite. 
that every time you mint a new version on GitHub, it will upload to PyPI or PyPy. I don't know how to pronounce it. So that is useful too. And a docs that will build documentation, which will come to at the end of the video. So let's push our changes now to GitHub. So what we're going to do is make a new branch and I'll say um, initial updates. And I'm gonna stage all our commits and say initial commit, commit these changes and push them, submit. Now what we'll see is a PR hopefully will open here or we can open a PR rather. Let's say initial uh, setup for version 0.0.1 a pull request. And you could see all of the changes we made in the file changes. I always like to make changes in pull requests rather than main so that it's a little bit easier to keep your code repository clean because I'll, I'll show you how we do that in just a moment. Um, but what you can see is that also it will run the various unit tests we made before you can actually merge it into main. And that's useful because you're not going to merge broken code in. So first it is gonna to check to see, in this case, I have a package. This is probably not something you'll have. This checks to see if there's any like API keys that are accidentally uploaded, but it's gonna run, build the documentation. It's going to run the test suite and you can see this one passed, which is good. And you can open these up and check them out yourself. So everything passes here, which is great. And we can merge it. I like to do squash and merge so that you only get one commit that's added. It squishes all of them. We really only had one, but if we had a hundred, um, it's sometimes useful to just do squash and merge. Let's set up our initial package. We'll confirm squash. And it's merged. And you can delete the branch when you're done, which I like to do. And you can see that updated now in main. And it will actually rerun the tests again on main, just as a sanity check here. And your code is pretty much ready now. Every time you make a commit, you're going to submit a pull request or potentially submit to main if you prefer and the test suite will run. And it'll tell you, hey, green check, you're doing well, or red X, not good. And you can also install it locally like we discussed before. The last piece of this puzzle is the documentation. So it's always good to have documentation, and I think it's good to have that early. I use a package called Material MKDocs or MKDocs Materials, and you don't really need to change all this. There's a lot of boilerplate in this YAML file, but the important part is this navigation and this tells you, for instance, what is going to be shown on the documentation. So in this docs folder, it contains, you don't need to change any of this. This index is like a base section of your documentation. The about section, I just put three sample files here. It's gonna be a little bit beyond the scope of this video for how to make the documentation, but I'll show you just how you build it. So if you do mkdocs serve, um, oops, we have to first install the docs dependencies, which we'll do now. I'll give it a moment. I'm gonna switch terminals here uh, just because my other one was acting up. If we do mkdocs serve, once everything was installed, we will build the documentation. And you can see that it gives you a URL. You open it up. And you can see, hey, here is our code. It has an about section like I had in the mkdocs.yaml file. It contains information from the code of conduct, the license, etc. And if we wanted to add a page, what we can do is let's say we want to add a new folder that I'll call basics. And in there, I'll put test.md. Say, hi, this is a test file. And then in the navigation section, what I'll do is say uh, basics, basics slash test.md. And then this should hopefully rebuild and we will go back. And what we'll see is there's now a basic section with test and it says, hi, this is a test file. So when you wanna make new test files or rather when you wanna make new documentation, you can just add folders and files to the docs folder and then specify them in this nav section. You can also have these documentation pages uploaded on GitHub. There's a section for that on the GitHub website of how to make your own website, but this is effectively it. So I hope with this video, I've shown you how you can use the template repository to make your own Python package that you can install. You can have tests, 
you can have documentation. And the only bit we didn't go over here is how to mint a new version on PyPy. That is actually quite easy. All you have to do is make a new release. So when you're done, create a new release, fill it out, say version 0.0.1, .0 put it in your details, hit publish release, and provided that you have an account set up with PyPy, it will upload a new version there that you can then pip install. All right, well, I'll leave it at that and I hope this was helpful.